Teresa welcome to my channel thank you for joining me here today today we're going to be do, doing some printing I've been out into the garden and found a selection of grasses and leaves and I've done some nature inspired prints using some natural tones of paint added in a little extra detail with some pens at the end but I had a lot of fun um, creating these. I've used leaves before in my printing and it is one of my favourite um, mark making tools, so to speak. I'll move these out of the way, get set up and show you exactly what you need and how to do it. As always, I'll begin by giving you a quick rundown of what I'm using today. The gel plate that I'm using today is this 6 by 6 inch plate by Gel Press. I like working in this uh, square format. This is a new plate um, for me. I've, I've been using it over the last couple of weeks and really enjoyed it. So I'm using that one again today. And as you can see, this time I've actually got it set um, on a piece of eight by eight paper on my table. And this is just to help me align my prints. I'm going to be printing onto eight inch square um, paper. This is just some sketchbook paper around about 180 GSM I would say. I'm using this one today because it's not a bright white, it's a sort of a, a, an off white. If I sort of compare it there to a, a bright white you can see. And because I'm using um, quite natural warm tones I thought it would look quite nice um, if we saw any of the paper that it be this sort of slightly off white. Now as I said the reason I've popped my gel plate down on a piece of eight inch paper which I've taped down to my table is so that as I do the prints I can line up the edges of my paper each time and I should I don't have to worry about being able to see am I aligning the various layers. I've used um, little hinges before now um, but this is quite a straightforward way if anybody's thinking about how to line up prints just pop down on your table a template as it were and then you've got something to work from. As I say I want to use some sort of natural toned paints. Um, these are the Arteza acrylics that I'm using today and I've chosen burnt sienna, yellow ochre, olive green and Payne's grey. Um, I think they should work well together. They're all quite warm tones and fairly neutral, natural tones. I have a brayer. This is my speedball rubber brayer. I'm just going to be using that one. And I'm going to be doing prints using some grasses and things that I've just picked out of the garden. Really some weeds. Um, these for any of you, if, if, if you're unfortunate to have these uh, horsetail weeds, you will know how invasive they are. So let's see if they can redeem themselves and create an interesting print. I picked some ferns, which I'm hoping are going to last um, this session. I picked them an hour or so ago and some of them are starting to curl up a little bit, um, but they should be all right. And I also picked some grass. Um, my lawn needs cutting desperately. We've had a lot of rain here in the UK and I haven't been able to go out and mow the lawn. So around the edges, especially, there were some longer bits of grass. So I've picked those in the hopes that we might get a nice, interesting print um, of the little seed head bits at the top. I've done lots of prints with leaves and things before. There's a couple of videos in my playlist if you want to go and check them out. But I just thought today it would, it would be nice um, to just try and do some sort of natural, um, use natural materials, sort of natural colours and just create some interesting prints. I've also grabbed a couple of other things for making marks. I've chosen two of the texture plates that I made a couple of weeks ago. Um, do go check out the video if you haven't looked at it. This is the one with the fabric and the tin foil. I thought they might work quite well with the, the leaves. I've also got a piece of bubble wrap here as well. I'm just sort of, sort of playing around with the idea that I might need a little bit more texture um, other than just with the leaves, so I've, I've grabbed those as well. Other than that, some scrap paper, some water for cleaning my plate off, some paper towel, and that's about it really. If I do decide to add a little bit more detail um, once I've completed the prints, I have got a selection of black and white pens here. I've got a couple of the white uh, Uniball Signo gel pens and I have some Unipin fine liners in assorted sizes. These are the 0 0.3, 0 0.5 and 0 0.8. I might add a little bit of line detail in. I'm not sure yet. We'll see whether they need anything added to them when I finish printing. But I'm going to begin by getting some paint down on my plate. 
So I'm going to use the yellow ochre and the olive green. And just blend that over the plate with the brayer. I'm going to use this tin foil texture plate. Just to add a little bit of pattern into the background. And pop on some of my foliage and take a print. As I said at the beginning, lining up the edges of this paper with the paper that my plate is sitting on. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it is there as a helpful guide. Now just take a little care as these in particular um, are not completely flat. A lot of people do ask why don't I use a brayer or something to rub across the paper and my answer is always I like using my hands, I can feel how much pressure I'm using. It just suits me better. If you prefer to use a brayer or something like that then go ahead and do that. And we pull that off and obviously if you've watched any of my previous um, videos you'll see that you, the first layer you get this sort of silhouette. I can now remove those um, stems and again lining up my paper. I can then lift the rest of the paint that should then give us some of the detail of those stems, like so. So I'm just going to clean that off. I'm going to take a little of the burnt sienna This time I think I'm going to add a little texture with this sheet of bubble wrap. I'm going to take one of my fern leaves and take this first print again. carefully press down all over. You can lift that leaf off. Realign the paper. And create a second layer. Now I can leave that on the plate. There's quite a bit of paint there. So I'm going to take the yellow ochre and 
and apply a thin layer see what we can pick up from here and that creates a really nice uh, background layer got the detail there from the fern leaves I'm going to add a little olive green and Payne's grey I'm going to take some of the smaller fern take this print and create another layer again using that piece of paper underneath as a guide And I think I'm going to leave that one like that because I like the fact that I can see this detail through here rather than uh, removing this and printing again directly on here. So I'm going to stop that print at that point, take a print from what we've got on here. I'm thinking I might add a layer of paint. So let's add some yellow ochre. And a little of that burnt sienna. Let's also put a few crackles in this layer using our fabric plate and see what we've got there and there we've got the image of the ferns in the background we've got this crackle on top I'm going to clean my plate off add some yellow ochre add some Payne's grey And I want to pop a lot of foliage on my plate, so I'm going to take two of the larger ferns. Going to remove them and see if we can't get that bit of detail as well. And the details in there, it's all quite subtle, there's a lot of layers, but we can see the detail of the fern leaves here 
end up here. I'm going to be able to pick some of that out with pens afterwards um, and should really make those leaves just pop forward. So I'm going to use some olive green for this last print. Some of the yellow ochre. Take my bundle of grasses that I've got. Take my first layer. Remove the grasses. And replace my print just to pull up that detail. Let's take a little more yellow ochre, a little burnt sienna. Let's take this foil again to add in some texture. And our horse tails. Pull up the detail, which again it's showing in there, and we should be able to highlight that. So I've moved my plate, cleaned up, and um, put everything away. These are the four prints that we've created in this session here. And they're all different. Um, they're all, I hope that you can see on the camera, there is subtle detail here in the, in the backgrounds with these using these darker colours. But as I say, we're going to pick that out with some pens and help uh, define some of the different layers. But I'm really happy with the colour choices that I've, I've used. I normally veer for like really bright, uh, vibrant colours. So it was nice today for a change to use something a little more subtle. So I'm thinking of using the 0.3 Unipin Fine Line pen. I want something fairly, fairly delicate. I do have thinner pens than that, but I think the 0.3 will be good. I'm going to use this Uniball Signo um, white gel pen as well, just to sort of pick out some detail um, by outlining and things like that. Just sort of general embellishing on these prints. And here are my finished prints. As I say, I've added some detailing with black fine liners and white gel pens, just to sort of bring out some of the distinction between the different layers that we've got. And I'm really, really pleased with them. I've just um, cut myself a little mount here from some sort of deep sort of petrol coloured card, just to show what these would look like if they were framed up. It's always it always looks so much better than just a random print on the middle of the paper. So I think sometimes it is worth just cutting yourself a little mount to see what it would look like if you were to frame it and just finish it off. And I really like um, that we, we've got the distinction in the layers here. So that's my first one. Here's my second one. I really like the bright um, golden tone here and the detailing of the leaves that we can see. It's really picked up a lot of very, very fine detail in there. 
Here is my next one. I like this one again. Lots of layers, um, lots of sort of detail in there. I've picked up some of the darker leaves with this black pen, outlined the larger silhouette with the white. And where I just got some sort of negative space, just added some dots in just for a bit extra detail there. I always feel like this white, it's almost like um, the frostiness that you get in the winter when the, when the, the frost settles on the edge of bracken. It, it reminds me of that. And this was my final one with the with the grasses. And again, just picked out with some black pen, with some white pen. I added a couple of extra ones in that just weren't there, but just to fill in um, the space and balance the pattern a little bit. But again, really interesting um, layered design. And I really like that I've used these neutral colours this time. Um, it's made a, a change from my usual brights. So I hope that this has inspired you to go out into the garden or if you're out on a walk, just sort of pick some grasses and uh, weeds and things that you might otherwise just overlook and try them in your printing. Um, really, really nice. These would make great greetings cards as well. But I think I'm going to pick a couple of my favourites and just pop them in a frame and display them here in my craft room. So as always, if you enjoyed the video, please leave me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will link to a couple of other videos um, where I've used leaves in the past in the end card at the end of the video. So do check those out if you haven't seen them already. But for now, that's all. Bye. Are you done?